Hello, my beautiful moon children and my Cancerian family. I am, as always, so excited to sit with you and chat about this life and uh, work through it together, see where it takes us, because I'm just as much on a learning journey as each and every one of you. And, you know, the learning just continues. But what I do love about this month is we have a lot of energy that is totally supportive of you and really brings a lot of light and color to the world. And that's because it's a Scorpio season. So we have the sun moving through Scorpio, but we also have Mars moving through Scorpio, Mercury moving through Scorpio, a new moon in Scorpio. We have all this energy in a fellow water sign this month. And I love this for you all because this is heart energy for cancers. Um, this is energy that unlocks like a lot of your natural ability to create beauty in the world and to express and play and, you know, make in the world. So it's a really exciting creative time. And honestly, the note that came up when I was thinking through the Scorpio season, the beauty of the Scorpio season is like, this is rose colored glasses energy. So this is about making a beautiful story of your life, right? Like the creative process of using our minds and using our creative abilities to create beauty in the way we see ourselves, the way we see our world and really like making it almost kind of a little workshop inside of ourselves. We are like, actively creating all that beauty, all that movement, all those creative new ideas. So it's a really, really beautiful energy for you. It's also an interesting Scorpio season in general, because at the end of it, we have a full moon and partial lunar eclipse in Taurus. And this is heralding a shift in the nodes that will be happening in early 2022. But this, this eclipse starts eclipse season, as we all are aware, these happen about every six months. Um, which is a time of shift. This full moon eclipse in Taurus is about your community. It's about, you know, what you want your community of friendships and all those around you to look like and feel like. And there being some shifts and some new ways of seeing that, which I'm really excited about for you all. Um, as we grow and change, you know, it's so nice to have friendships and community that grow and change with us. And this is a time where you may make some new friendships or open your heart to like how you're going to make those new friendships. Oh, sorry, my nose is so itchy right now. Allergies as the moisture hits here in where I am. So, okay, so then we also have, of course, the beginning of Sag season on the 21st and Mercury closely follows behind into Sag. So we're starting to work also for Cancers with your sixth house, which all has to do with like how you show up in this life. You know, what do you want your routines, your rituals, your devotion to your life to look like? So there's a huge emphasis here this month. Eight of Wands, oh yeah, I love it. There's a huge emphasis this month on devoting yourself to building the life you truly want. And I mean truly want, not what you're supposed to want, not what you've been, three of sorts, makes a lot of sense, yep, as we grow, we must grieve. As we grow and change and build, we must let go of the old. We must take some time to feel. That's very important. And Four of Swords. Okay, this is really interesting, the combo of these cards. And it speaks to what I was just about to get into as I was shuffling, which is not what you think you're supposed to want, not what you've been scripted into thinking you want to not. I mean, for me, it's like, it's interesting because I think vision boards and journal and like, Scripting is great. Like it's a really great exercise. Go for it. Play with those tools if they speak to you. Totally. But I think they can also sometimes get us confused if we're like not sure exactly how we want because we will end up putting things into these scripts and into these vision boards and into these stories that we don't really want. But we've been told by culture and society so many times that we want the fancy car, or we want a specific type of relationship or a specific type of house or a specific type of physical look, right? We've been told that so many times that it can kind of sneak in. And so one of the important things in this Scorpio season in general is really discerning between what is truly ours to bring to life and create and what is something that we just don't have to carry anymore. We just don't have to force ourselves to desire anymore, force ourselves to care about anymore. You know, 
like looking a certain way or like having a certain status, right? Like those things that don't really speak to our souls at all. And everybody's going to be a little different on this one, but oh, shaking all my equipment here. Um, but it's important that we differentiate here. And here's what I'm noticing when I look at this energy, because once again, it's so supportive of Cancerian energy this month. I mean, it's just gorgeous for you guys. This is a really, really, really nice month for getting your creative fire stoked. And I see that here with the eight of wands. You know, this is a card of forward motion. It's like the right steps are just moving in lockstep with you, right? And those right steps can look I don't really think there's a scale of big or small. These are steps that you just take and they feel right, right? And there's that flow to it where it's the next step and the next step and the next step. There's a breakthrough happening here. Whenever you're getting eight of wands energy, something is flowing, something is moving again. Something that was maybe feeling stuck or frustrating or embattled has now suddenly broken free and there is movement where there was not movement, right? And that's really, really, really exciting. And that's great. And I want us to focus on that. <laughs> but the, here's the thing, you know, Eight of Wands is about movement into new ways of being, movement into new ways of creating, movement into new ways of like being ourselves in our lives. And that also means that we need to just take a moment to incorporate as well. And that's where these two cards come in. In fact, you know what? I want to pull a four, final card in our chat today because... I do feel like these two cards are really great. And Temperance, hello. Hello to Sag season coming in and giving us some new perspectives. Okay, but the Three of Swords, Four of Swords is really interesting to me because this is what I've found time and time again in my own life and in with those who have worked with and all of that, which is that we kind of have this idea that when we have new creative growth or a new doorway opening up in our lives or a new chapter beginning that's really exciting and something we wanted and it's happening, that we're just going to feel hyper energized, joyful and manic all of the time. But what I have found is these are some of the most nuanced, tender places in our lives, because as we are, you know, starting that new business or moving into that new space or getting deeper in our commitments or, you know, getting deeper in our art and realizing we're expressing our truest self and we're super vulnerable, any of these things, any and all of these things, we're also having to grieve who we've been, what we're leaving behind, old comfort, um, old, even, you know, even the comfort of familiar things that weren't working for us anymore. And that's what the work of three of swords and four of swords together like this is really doing. So it almost is like, I can tell when there's like big growth and big, like coming to our truer selves. When I see cards like the three of swords, especially, or the four of swords, um, because this is an integral part of it. This is an important part of it. Normally, if we're having emotions that we need time to integrate and rest into and allow to process through, it means that we are growing and something has changed. And, you know, change is a beautiful thing. It's the rule of the universe, right? That we are always changing and the world is always changing and our circumstances are always changing. And change requires rest, change requires recharge, change requires letting emotions run through our bodies so that we can release them and move forward. So there's just a reminder here that you are going to be moving forward. Doors are going to be opening. Things are going to be moving and you still may be processing deeper emotions around that. You know, I've also found that when we are getting the things we've been longing for, right? Like that great love relationship, that great creative project, that great open door that we've been waiting for, that big yes. The part of ourselves that feels unworthy, scared, you know, that inner child maybe that was taught they weren't worth safety or love comes up and is like, am I allowed to have this? And so often, you know, it's a very tender point. And that's why I think those cards are showing up here because they are surrounded by the eight of wands, which is forward motion and temperance, which is also a card of creative passion. It's, it's, you know, to me, this angel is such an alchemist. He's putting together, it's pull, they are putting together, um, these different elements from these cups. They're blending them. They're creating something new. 
out of elements that are familiar. Um, temperance is also about balance as well, which is really funny because this card is associated with Sagittarius. Um, but you know, this is a card of balance. It's about finding the sweet spot that's right for you. So yes, forward growth, motion forward, creativity, passion, joy, playfulness, extroversion, also rest, introversion, feeling deep feelings, going deep, journaling to let, you know, let old patterns go. Um, accepting yourself fully as you are in this moment and not feeling like you need to have the process done already. You know, temperance is soul medicine, but it's also the creativity of alchemy, which is about alchemizing things, right? That elements of your life, whether that be grief or confusion or changes that you are learning that you can't even feel like you can't even keep up with. All of these things can be alchemized into beautiful art, into beautiful meaning. And that is a big part of the journey here. And truly, I truly do believe like it's a myth busting around what it means to live our truest life is that living our truest lives means where you're going to be feeling all our feelings <laughs> and it's going to be, it's going to be accepting ourselves and all of our feelings is going to be accepting ourselves where we are, how we look, how we move through what, and also being open to not keeping it the same forever and ever and ever. Right and letting go of the familiar. And there's so much that goes into a creative time of creative amplification, a curiosity, exploration, and um, becoming our next version of self. And I would say like in November, it's not so much that your life is going to be like turned upside down and suddenly everything's thrown on the floor and you have to like scramble up the pieces. What I'm noticing is that there's forward motion. There are steps being taken, things are opening, doorways are opening, all of that's happening. And you're gonna to start to notice, oh my gosh, like this is really happening. These things are really coming to life and I can see over the next six months, 12 months, this coming year, I'm gonna be doing things I never thought I was doing before. And I'm gonna be doing things in new ways I never thought I was gonna be doing them before. What does that look like? You know, what does that feel like? What and, and just giving yourself the time to feel through that and kind of prepare and open your heart. Because like I said, this is big heart energy for cancers this month. This is about playing and letting your heart expand and grow. But that does mean, you know, just to take care of ourselves that much more. Um, and this is a topic I feel really passionately about because whenever I do my best work, whenever I do my best growth, this is the time when I feel the most sensitive, the most overwhelmed, the most like I need to rest and hide in between the, the expansiveness. And I'm actually going through a phase like that right now. So it's really interesting to talk about this topic because it's, it's one that I think it's so important to affirm because how lonely does it feel when things are going well in life and you're and you're feeling that heart expansion and you're feeling that creativity and you're feeling that readiness and you're also feeling the nuance of grieving the old and discomfort of the lack of familiarity and the newness and the overwhelm and it feels like you're not supposed to be feeling those things because you're supposed to just be feeling joyful you're supposed to just be feeling like on cloud 9 all the time right like that mythology of that hurts because then you just feel like this freak who can't even appreciate <laughs> the way they're growing and changing and i'm here to say that when we let ourselves have our full range of emotions, as we let our hearts expand and as we create, that is where the good stuff of life is and you're doing it just right. And it means that you are really here. How cool is that? So yeah, we've got big, big, juicy, bold energy for cancers this month. I'm really excited to see where it leads. It is going to be it is going to be a time of expansion and new paths opening up. And that brings a lot of new questions and ideas to the surface. Um, I have some affirmations for my beautiful Cancerian friends. So let's, let's do these. Here we go. I allow my heart to lead the way and show me the path. I listen to my intuition and it shows me openness in the world. As I give of my energy, I receive gifts of love and compassion, allowing myself to feel all of my emotions, 
to move through my body is a source of abundance and beauty in this life. I'm allowed to be creative and take that space and that time to create the way that I naturally create in the world. I think so much about this month is about not fighting the way you move through the world, not forcing yourself into strange shapes, but practicing creating just from your innate way of being. And each of you is going to have a different one, even though we're all sitting here to talk about Cancerian moon child energy and what we share there. Each of you and each of us is going to do that journey differently. And it's going to look a little different. You know, we all have different traumas and different joys. We all have different, different haunted houses and different pains and different hopes. And so the way that this expressiveness gets explored is totally different. But I do know that more and more of us who show up the way that we are, um, and that is a softer, calmer, quieter energy, right? Like when we are just letting ourselves be who we are, it's not about forcing others to accept us. It's not about forcing the world to be different. It's just showing up and letting that creative process flow, the the healthier and kinder this world is going to be. So I'm just really excited to see that energy showing up. And I'm so curious to see what creativity and romance and open doors are expanding the Cancerian world. So leave a message. Let me know what's coming up for you. I would love to hear about what has been happening in your world here. Um, also, we are going to be deep diving on all the stuff coming up. We've got a Venus retrograde in December. We've got nodal changes coming up in the new year. Lots of, a lot is going to happen in these last weeks of 2021 and the first weeks of 2022. And I would love to support you on my Patreon. It's a great way to support me as well. And we just have a really great exchange of energy there. You can also find me on my Instagram, which is at Sarah Verba. I'll leave that below. There's only one true at Sarah Verba. So I'll I'll leave that below so you know where to find me. And I love you all so much. I hope to see you here very, very soon once again. Sending you my love.